The Lord will be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Your faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If they were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Be seated just for a few moments, please. One of, of, of Jesus' uh, favorite words that he used so often was Father. And he, he told us to pray, you know, our Father. And I believe the, the Aramaic word that, that he used, he didn't speak English, of course, so he didn't speak in, in the Philippine language. <laughs> but he certainly didn't speak in Gaelic, like my ancestors. He spoke in Aramaic. And I believe the word was Abba, A B B A, you know, which is a. Some, they say the nearest thing to it in English is Daddy or something like that, something very uh, warm and, and, and affectionate, which was revolutionary because uh, the dear idea of God was a distant person to be feared, to be dreaded, you know, uh, uh, and Jesus came the exact opposite. You know. In fact, one day Philip. Uh, he heard Christ speak again of the Father, and he became a little frustrated. He said, you're always talking about the Father. Show him to us. That'll be enough, he said. I always say, Philip must have been from Missouri. <clears throat> Show me. <clears throat> but his answer was great. Philip, he said, he who sees me sees the Father. God the Father is like Jesus. And we want to know who God is, and we, we become familiar with Jesus, the way, the truth, and, and the life. And the word Father is, is, a, is, a, is a, it's a very important word in, a, in our faith, really. And they call us fathers, but we're kind of phony fathers, really. We're not real fathers. Uh, Mother Teresa calls her priest brother. You know. The real dad, the fathers are dads, fathers of families. You know. The role of the father is most important, most important. It cannot be overemphasized. Really. The, many of the many people have written on this, and people in the, the sociological world that many of the problems in society today are due to the lack of good fathers. Fathers so often absent from homes in today's society. Uh, and so that they, particularly then the boys growing up, of course, have no understanding, of, no role model of what, what, what a dad should be. Uh, I'm a great fan of uh, Father Greg Boy and the, the great Jesuit who was working over in the, in the, in the, in the, with the gangs downtown Los Angeles and so on, you know, homeboys industry. And uh, uh, there, most of those poor fellows have been in jail, of course, you know, are there because they never had a dad to show them how. I mention all of this because Alejandro was a dad and granddad and a great granddad. You know, really. I, I wish I could have known him. I'm sure my life would have been greatly enriched by that. But uh, I'm sure since he died, particularly in, in getting together and talking about him, and, and that's so important, you know, for you. You know, he's gone to glory, surely. You know, really after. A life, 90 years, I imagine, you know, really. My goodness, he was born in 1921, was it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What he has seen in, in his lifetime, you know, the, the work that he has put in, really a big. Was there many in the family altogether? How many? Eight. Huh? Eight. 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 One. Oh, my goodness. 
eight, you know, and, and then and I was just thinking, you know, how thrilled he would be to see the grandchildren do the readings, etc. You know, the magnificent voice over here, you know, uh, sing leaders in the in the uh, Alleluia. See, all of you are your lives are that much richer because of that Andrew. You know. The, the legacy that he has given to you. you know. Always thank God for that. For the gifts that we have, we need to acknowledge them, own them, and thank the Lord for them. You know. I think that's something we become conscious of. As we, I'm not that far behind that Andrew in age, believe it or not. And uh, every morning I'm retired now. Every morning when I wake up, I have a, I need to have it now. Uh, I have a litany of thanksgiving. People to thank God for you know, really. And they are starts with my parents. Because the, more, the older you get, the more you realize you owe so much. We owe so much to our parents. Whatever we are, really, in great part, is due to our parents. Not so much of what they said to us. We probably resisted that when we were young. We didn't like it when they corrected us. And, uh, but just an example, you know. Their strength, their perseverance, their faithfulness to each other, their loyalty. And, and, uh, and the, the way they practiced. My own father was a saintly man, you know. He died of a very painful death of cancer uh, 61 years ago. Young person when he died. So you are very blessed to have had your dad with you and your mother too. God rest her, she's not dead too long. And the children the, and grandch the grandchildren and great grandchildren, you know, how blessed you are. I always feel that's the one area in life when I was cheated. I never knew my grandparents. That's a special relationship, isn't it? Yeah. A very special relationship. To know and it mustn't have been easy for him when he came to this country. He was, wasn't a young man when he came, right? It was uh, the 60s, was it? He came there. After living out really a full life in the Philippines, just to uproot, go into a different culture, a different <coughs> land. And of course, that's the story of so many of uh, the ancestors here in this country. People who came from Europe initially, you know, and then more modern times from Philippines, Vietnam, Korea, uh, from, and from all over Latin America and Central America. You know, the, the, uh, uh, they were great people. They were the people who made this country what it is. You know, so, so today really is a, it's a, it's a mixture of sorrow and joy, I think. Funeral is, you know, really. Uh, do not let your hearts be troubled, the Gospel says. Well, yes, to some extent we are. No matter how old I think our parents or grandparents are, we don't want them to go. We, we want to hang, maybe that's selfishness on our part. We want, because they're so special. You know, particularly parents, when, grandparents when they get old, you know, really. So we're troubled, really, we feel a, a loss. And, you know, we've got to go through that. There's no sh short-circuiting it, you know. You can't just go to the drugstore and get something to... You know, you can't. You just have to deal with it, accept it, and feel it. Cry your heart out if you're lucky. Those who can cry are the lucky ones, really. You know, and that's neat. And then gradually, day by day, it eases. It's also joyful because we're celebrating a great life. A great life, life full of years. You see, full of love. You know, uh, who was it? The great uh, Spanish mystic. Uh, St. Uh, Teresa of Avila, I think it was, who said that in the evening of life, in the end of life, we'll be judged on love. Not by what we've accomplished in, you know, great things, you know, achieved a lot of wealth, or a lot of power, or influence. Huh? No, we'll be judged on love. You see? The parents are the ones who show us what love is all about in living for one another. So. We thank God for Alejandro today. We thank God for the for all the gifts he's passed on to you and to the countless people with whom he's come in contact during his long life. And the best tribute we can give him really is to try to somehow, in our own circumstances, to walk in his footsteps. To 
to, to, to recall his values, you follow. Make them more and more your own and, really, and then try to put them into practice and our dealings with one another. So that whenever time comes, as it will for everybody, from the oldest, and I'm probably by far the oldest here, to the youngest, the little girl who did the reading so beautifully for us, you know, it will come to all of us, you know. That. So let's hope that at the end of our days, whoever presides over our funeral will say, you know, he or she lived a life of love.